welcome to Back of the Net. This is the preview show for the FA Cup clash against Burnley. My name's Sam Davis. I'm Ben Phillips. Oh, but Ben Phillips. I thought, you know what? I thought you'd shot up. Ben, nice to have you here. Tom is chillaxing. He's preparing himself for tomorrow's FA Cup clash. We need to be loud and proud at the Vitality Stadium. Our support, I've got to say, at Old Trafford, wasn't that great, but then there were a lot of Man United fans in there. We need to be loud. Burnley, they're going to be a side who want to carry on their momentum. And on this preview show, we've got a load coming up, including... We get the views of the supporters and ourselves on what we need to see tomorrow. We'll also hear from YouTuber extraordinaire Liam, a.k.a. Vizzy. He's a Burnley fan and he's going to tell us all about their incredible season so far. We've got the team news and the injury updates coming out of Dean Court. Plus, we've got Tom Jordan, who's going to be joining us to provide his team prediction too. So, Ben, lovely to have you on the preview, my friend. It's been, it's been a while since we've caught up, yeah. but look... I need to ask you about the O'Neill era so far. If social media is to be anything to look at and to gauge the opinion, it's not overly positive. It doesn't sound like it's going okay. But from your perspective, how do you feel about the games he's had so far and uh, what are your thoughts on him? I feel um, somewhat different to a lot of people. Um, I've said before that um, we've, we're going through a bad patch, as you know we all know, six losses in the last seven games. But... You know we're we're 16th, and we go and if if our bad patch finishes some somewhat soon, and we're out of the relegation zone, then that that is a major positive, I think, because if if the only way is up from there, we start to pick up a few wins because of, I know our fixtures aren't great, but if we're playing Brentford, Brighton, those sorts of teams, Forest as well, and we can get a few points from there, then I think the only way is up, especially with January coming in, but um. I've it, I've not been completely against the way O'Neill's been playing um, in all honesty. It's I think it's could be seen as an improvement on Parker in a way for the fact that we have scored a bit more. Yeah. You know, scored three against Leeds, two against Tottenham, etc. So um, I'm, I'm I'm on the fence still. By the way, Ben, can you can you just show the people at home what you're drinking out of? I mean, you can probably see, but hold it up for everyone at home. Look at that. Is that not a beautiful thing? It's the AFCB podcast, the back of the net mug, and there are somehow some still available. So go to afcbpodcast.com slash coffee where you can order yourself a mug. Look, it's only 10 quid. We get very little from every purchase. But if you want to put more in, you certainly can. Every penny goes towards the podcast. So, yeah, it's a 3 p.m. kickoff. Tomorrow at the Vitality Stadium, it's going to be relatively rainy, 60% chance of showers, but 12 degrees. So you might not need your big coat, but you will need your coat. And look, Burnley fans travelling down, uh, fair play to you. It's about five hours in the car, but check uh, the roads because they aren't going to be particularly great. And if you're travelling down by train, good luck with that as well. But one thing we need to do, Ben, is check out the championship table to see where Burnley are. Mm. And wow, they are absolutely flying, aren't they? Yeah, they're doing amazingly. And if, if, you, if you're looking at the goals scored, they're, they're miles ahead of everyone in the league. Of 52 goals scored there. It's, it's amazing from them in an attacking sense. And under company, they've been transformed from the so-called defensive mm. Brexit side, as, <laughs> as, as some yeah. like to say. And they're, yeah, they look very free-flowing and attacking. And to be honest, I'm a bit worried about tomorrow looking at their form coming in. Well, yeah, Burnley have got 56 points after 26 games. That's seven points more than AFC Bournemouth after 26 games last season. But uh, one thing that's happening this season in the Championship, as we saw that table, there seems to be a gap, whereas we, we didn't really have that. And you know what? He's done really well since... He's left Manchester City, Vincent Company. Of course, he went to Underlet, where it was pretty mixed there. But then as soon as he joined Burnley, he, he's, he's changed the side completely. And there are fans that are waxing lyrical over their style of football. It's fair to say that, ben, that since we last played Burnley at home, we've got two very contrasting teams. When we last played them at home, it was under Eddie mm. in the league free-flowing, beautiful football, and they were that kind of hoofball side. I hope you don't take offence, but that's what the footballing world regards you as. Burnley, 
have changed into us and they're playing a really good style of football. Uh, and Bournemouth, the team that are finding themselves under O'Neill at the moment, it could be a really interesting clash tomorrow. What, what are you hoping to see? I mean, obviously a win, but any other things you want to see? I just want us to see playing more attackingly, to be honest. Mm. And it will be a good test against so-called championship players about seeing our um, defensive qualities and how, how we are actually doing. Obviously, I know we've had problems defending set pieces. I think it's 13 we've conceded this season. But um, I just want to see a good game of football, to be honest, because I'm not too fussed if we go out, as I don't think many Bournemouth fans will be, because it's the FA Cup. You know, We're probably not going to win it at the end of the day. But um, I just want to see us have, um, have a good go. And I don't really want to see too many changes, because I think it's important to give our squad that we've got now confidence because I think that's that's what we're, we're really lacking at the moment under the, the poor form that we've been in. Yeah, absolutely. Now, there you can see, those are the tweets. We put out a tweet earlier today asking what you want to see from AFC Bournemouth. And we sort of, we gave you a few hints, a rested side, a full strength team, taking the game to the opposition. Here's what people said. Nigel Winship said, a full strength team without a doubt. It's going to be a really tough game against a team that are flying, but still an opportunity to compete, be positive and build some momentum. Matt Watts said, a side with attacking intent from the outset. Whatever the lineup, it'd just be nice to see us play on the front foot. Cherry A said, a goal would be nice. Uh, I think it's important to set a very low bar for Gary O'Neill. If a goal is scored, we can say it's an improvement, even if we lose 3-1. Full strength for me. Uh, said Colin Byrne, most had an extended break due to the World Cup, weak until Brentford away, so no need to rest players, need to get back to that winning feeling. Fair play Colin. Heather said, like to see us start with a full strength team and then at half time or 60 minutes chuck on the bit part, part players. A good match against a team that's hopefully around the same level might just be what's needed to restore confidence in harmony. Sam said would like O'Neill to pick a strong team so that we take the confidence of winning this game into the league. They're a good side to winning this game will improve the lads' confidence in the major league. Yeah, Keith Brewer, I'd like to see us back to working hard and closing down and playing with a lot more pace and energy. Make it difficult for the opposition to defend against us. Less fussed about the result, more interested in how we play. Bob Gallimore, winning can become a habit, as can losing. Put out the strongest team and go from there. We also had Cherry Blossom as well. We need the three A's. Aggression, attack, and above all, accuracy in all departments. We had Adam, full strength. We got a week until the next game. Need the confidence and at least a display of some sort of tactics from the side. Andrew, the winning side for confidence. And there I'm scrolling through some more. As you can see, a lot of varied thoughts there. But most people, Ben, are saying that we should probably go with a strong side. Are you in agreement with that, yeah? Yeah, I think that's, I think it's a no-brainer, to be honest, and Gary Neal said it earlier, that there won't be too many changes if there are, which I think is important because, as I said earlier, confidence is really important after um, seeing as we're going into a game against Brentford who are high-flying. They're a very good team. Yeah. Obviously, we drew nil-nil early with them in the season, but they are doing amazingly this season. So confidence is key. Um, and if we were to just have a good performance, um, maybe score a few goals, that would be nice. And maybe get the fans in a more positive mood. Because I think if we lose and O'Neill isn't sacked, it will put a lot of pressure just from a fan's perspective and also yeah. a club perspective as well on that Brentford game. And seeing as they are a very good side, it may may not mix very well. But we've got to wait and see. Now, can you remember the last time we played Burnley in the FA Cup? I think I can. I think it was behind closed doors. It was. Correctly. Yeah. Can you remember the result? 2-0. 2-0. Yes, exactly. Goals came from the penalty spot, Junior Stanislas, and also Sam Surridge scored as well. I think that was one where it looked like it was disallowed, and then the ref chatted to the linesman, and yeah. then it was given. So, yeah, we beat Burnley there 2-0. In the FA Cup against Burnley, the Cherries have won one, drawn one, and lost three. In all competitions, though, the Cherries have won seven, drawn 11 and lost 15. So the stats are not particularly good. Which um, which players do you want to see starting? Are there any, if you're a Burnley fan and you're looking to maybe inform them on the one to watch for AFC Bournemouth, is there a particular starlet that you'd maybe want to highlight in a cherry shirt? I want to see Sariki Dembele play, to be mm. honest. Um, get him a lot of game time, seeing as he is typically a more left-sided player. And he is, he's very direct with his running, you know, he'll run, he'll, he can create something out of nothing as such. 
Um, and I think if, if I would say one player that isn't the known Solanke, Billing, etc., then it probably would be him. Mm. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And in terms of Burnley, I think Jay Rodriguez, I mean, he's now 33 years old, but he's Burnley's leading scorer with nine goals. And you know what? He's still doing a job for them. And he certainly likes scoring against us at Dean Court. I think he scored a, a, a couple for Saints. I mean, one worldie, I certainly remember um, from him. So, yeah, that's, that's going to be interesting to see if we see him again at the Vitality Stadium. But you know what? Enough from us. It's always interesting to hear from Burnley fans themselves. And you know who we caught up with? None other than YouTube sensation Liam, a.k.a. Vizze, for his view on the side from Turf Moor. So we've got the one and only Liam, a.k.a. Vizze. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. How are you, my friend? Yeah, very good, thank you. So then, Burnley. I couldn't watch that every week. Anti-football. Time wasting, too predictable. We should be beating teams like Burnley. Um, those are the things we all used to say. This season, though, I've seen a few of your games. What is going on at Turf Moor? The football is sublime. It's the brand new era, the the modern football era, and uh, it's took a a while to be fair. And with no disrespect to Sean Dyche, it's something that it felt like was needed to be made, you know, this new transition into basically modern football. Mm. Essentially, I don't want to discredit him too much, you know, because Sean Dash did absolute wonders with his club and with the players that he had and the finances that he had, he had to do the best he can, he can do really. And he did a fantastic job, but watching Burnley right now under Vincent company, the football free flowing possession base, passing up in the back, tricky wingers pace, literally the uh, sat opposite of what you may be used to to Burnley for the last about a decade now. So, yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. And the fact that not only is it good to watch, but it also is getting results very well is I can't be any more happier. Yeah, I can imagine. So I've been up to Burnley a few times. I've witnessed some some horrible games. I remember a, a 4-0 loss. We always go to the cricket club just beforehand, and then we pop across yeah. to Turf Moor. And the last one was uh, one where we talked about VAR quite a lot. It was a, yeah. it was a convincing win for Burnley, but we felt I think that was as though... My, I think that was my last game at a Burnley mm. game before COVID hit. That was, yeah. I think that was the last game. We all thought it should have been different, but it wasn't. It's always a hard place to go. And look, the Burnley fans at the time, they reveled in the anti-football and they even sang do, 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 anti-football. anti-football. I, take, I, I yeah. take it that chant is nowhere to be uh, heard now, is it? I think it is still sung, but in <laughs> irony. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the origin of that chant was because of David Luiz, I believe, when we got a 2-2 draw away at Stafford Bridge that he got us anti-football and we kind of latched on saying, yes, of course we are, mate. You know, we absolutely loved it. I mean, saying that I've been down to the vitality a lot of times. I think I've been there every single game that we played against you guys mm. um, in the league that is, you know, and I do quite like Bournemouth because for whatever reason, we do have a very good yeah. uh, head-to-head against you guys. So, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to this game mainly just because of the fact that we can see some players that we haven't seen too much this year. Yeah, I think the, the the fixture always had a bit of spice with Eddie Howe, but obviously perhaps not so much anymore now that he's moved on. And they've always been very competitive games against you. I, I think I remember seeing one win at Turf Moor, which was a, a last minute Callum Wilson goal. Um, and then, season, I believe. Yeah, that's right. And then, um, you know, one one win against you down at Dean Court as well. I think we might have won 2-1, Junior Stan Saskot, all 1-0. But on the whole, Burnley have had a very good record against us. How... How importantly do you think you'll be treating it? Because we always had this dilemma when we were at the top end of the championship. Do you keep the momentum and keep the players you've got? Or do you want to save them? You don't want to avoid any injuries. So do you play a change team? What What do you think is going to happen tomorrow? I think that maybe the, the, the back line, so the defence, will stay relatively the same. I think mm. that that's a very important part to stay um, you know, always similar so that they are all familiar with each other and not getting out of any sort of rhythm. However, I do believe that attacking wise, midfield midfield wise, you see some players that are on the periphery are, are on the periphery of the main eleven, um, players that may have picked up a knock and now getting back into fitness that can get a chance to start, like Scott Twine, for example, like Chilinov, for example. Um, you're looking like to see them some because the thing is with our team in the championship is 
is very, very good depth wise, yeah. especially. So there's players that are pretty good, but just can't get in the main eleven because we just seen are in such great form. So likes of Charlie Taylor, for example, he's a bench player for us, and by no means should he be a bench player whatsoever. He is very much a Premier League player, still in my opinion, and he's been used as a, a last minute player to bring on to try to see us a game. So players like him you'll see for us. So I think you'll see defensively pretty much the same, but in terms of the attack in midfield, you see some changes. Uh, so are you going to win the league? I mean, I think you are. You can, aren't you? Sure. I can't say win the league. I say yeah. we'll get promoted. I, I think yeah. I can say that. I mean, you can, if you believe in supercomputers, I think they're saying 90% and then another one saying 96%. Um, for us to not be in top two, I think re- requires a, well, we're 17 points clear of, let's say, the next real challenge in Middlesbrough. So that requires a 34 um, point swing. I, I mean, I'm just... I, 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 I don't want to say we're going to win the league or get promoted, yeah, but it, yeah. it's I've, I've, I don't think that's possible, really, especially with the depth that we have as well. Even with a massive injury crisis, I don't think even that will harm us that much to have that much of a drop. And that requires them to also win every game, essentially, and have a 100-point challenge in yeah. form. So, yeah, I think we will get promoted. Win the league, I can't say, because I do like Sheffield United. I think they're a good team, great depth and experience. So, only time can tell. So you're discounting the chances of your nearest and dearest Blackburn Rovers then, are you? <laughs> they are absolutely awful. <laughs> Genuinely, like this is the only thing I'll say about them, that the fact that they are third in the championship yeah. is, for me, the best example of how poor the league is. Really, they yeah. are the worst team that I've ever seen in my life wow. that are anywhere near the top of it's funny. Table. It's funny you say that because when we got promoted, we felt so the overall quality was 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 pretty poor. But unlike yourselves, we we sort of limped over the line. But it seems like you and Sheffield United are striding over the line. And yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see who goes up with you and maybe Sheffield United, like you say, Borough could could well be a shout. We've got we've got a habit, Bournemouth, of drawing the worst possible draw in a, in the cup competitions in the Carabao Cup. It was Newcastle United away, and they moved the fixture with nine. Uh, days to go yeah playing Burnley isn't great but thankfully you're coming to us this time so you know there's a saving grace there um look what's your prediction for it do you think do you think Burnley can get through to round four um I mean I think it kind of relies more in terms of what you do um I don't Mm. know in terms of what lineup you guys may have if you guys may have a fully you know like like where we was at when we was in Premier League that when it came to Cups, we couldn't care any less. It was all yeah. focused on on staying up. And I think you guys on the same board here that you guys just won't really care about the Cup, focus on the league. Mm. So where, where do you guys see yourselves in that? Do you guys see yourselves having a real rotated B team, essentially? It's, it's, it's really difficult. And look, Gary O'Neill, the manager, he's under a lot of pressure at the moment with uh, four points in the league from the last 27. It It's not too good. Look, there are games against Chelsea, which we probably expected to lose, and then even in the last game as well. But it's just it's just the manner of of the losses, and we don't seem to be going toe to toe. Um, I think he'll probably try to keep momentum. So you know, whilst there is a risk of maybe injuring uh, the odd player, I think I think we need to get momentum ahead of our match against Brentford in the Premier League. So I think he'll go pretty strong for it. it it shouldn't be forgotten that we've actually got a fair bit of strength in depth that have, hasn't been used in the premier league so i think it's going to be a really even game actually and uh I was, um i'm just hoping that there's a result on the day because uh, I, I don't want another midweek trip back, <laughs> back yeah, to turf yeah. as lovely as it is <laughs> that'd be even worse to be fair like i mean I, and I, when i say this i i don't mean it by any sort of disrespect because i quite like bournemouth i kind of see not well not similar because mm. we well in the past we we're both very two different types of football teams but yeah. you know a, a team that tops its fans of the likes and pundits will always kind of just say yeah they'll probably go down and you know we had that for many years and eventually did i guess but mm. would you say that you this year are by any means i don't want to say you guys are i don't know overperforming but mm. do you guys did you expect you to be 16th right now? Or do you think that you would be doing worse than where you are right now? It, it's so strange to say that because I think at the start of the season, if you ask many a Bournemouth fan, would you be okay with being 16th in the league come New Year? 
most Bournemouth fans would have snapped your hand off for it. We'd have absolutely loved it. But it's the fact that some of the games we've played, we've played some real poor sides, yet we've capitulated. Southampton at home was an example. They're, I think they're the worst side in the league and they weren't that great against us, but we just rolled over for them. West Ham away also wasn't particularly good as well. The Crystal Palace match at home recently, that you know that was absolutely dreadful. So it's, um, you know, we should have more points than what we've got. I think you know, getting rid of Scott Parker when we did was probably a good thing. But it's now focusing on the people who make the decisions in terms of our managerial appointments, because three out of our last four managers have been internal appointments. And, you know, we, uh, you know, we were licking our lips at the thought of Marcelo Bielsa and all these names that we were linked with. And, and then we end up with the guy that we had already. It just it just didn't ring true to me. So I, I don't know what's going on there, but there is a there is a focus on Gary O'Neill and hopefully he can deliver. Hopefully he can do the job. But it's fair to say that a lot of fans aren't overly happy at the moment. But a win against Burnley in the Cup, you never know, it may help. Well, I mean, know. every single football fan you know, are quite narrow-minded because mm. all they care about is the next game. And if, if you win that, they pretty much forget everything that's mm. happened before that. So a win would be important for you guys, I do believe. Mm. And for us, I mean... I do really like the players that I think. So I think it's got twine. I mean, I'm really yeah, just player. looking player. forward to this one game because I suspect that Scott Tyne will start because mm. he's been back in fitness for about a month now. We've not really seen him play at all this year. We don't even know if he is still the same player that was seen to be the next Deli Alley from NK Dons and tearing up League One. So really, I, I don't I frankly don't care if he win or lose this game as long as I see Scott Twine play and he has a decent mm. decent game as far as I'm aware. I like a win. However, you know, it won't be end of the world. And as if you guys put out a strong enough team, you're know, with only a few of the players and we still lose competitively, I wouldn't be too upset personally. Mm, interesting thoughts. Okay. And look, people know about your channel already. You are basically YouTube royalty, but go on, tell them, tell them all about it, mate. YouTube royalty. Um, <laughs> I do kind of football investigation stuff. I, mean, I used to be a FIFA guy, but that game is <clears throat> awful. Um, so I'm trying to branch out now in the world of football. So um, V-I-Z-E-H, Visa, it's hard to really pronounce. So I try and spell it out for people who mm. may not understand. I do burn this stuff at time to time, but I'm, tr I'm, I'm doing well right now. I'm trying to branch out. So I appreciate it coming on. And for predictions, I kind of, I, I think there'd be goals in this game. I think yeah. there'd be goals. Um, we, I think we've scored basically two goals in every single game we've played in the last eight games. Mm -hmm. We keep scoring. So I would say, I don't know. I've, 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 why not? Three, two, Bournemouth. Why not? I don't, I don't oh. care the stage. I, 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 I want to say a draw. I want to say a, a draw so badly, but I kind of also don't want to draw as well because I don't want that replay. So two, two draw, and then we'll just kind of just give you a go by the end. And then I, I want to say we'll win. However, you know, like I don't care too much just because everything's going so well in the league. Mm. It's just like, yeah, I, I don't, I, I, I just want to see Scott try and play the stage. Yeah, love it, love it. Thanks for coming on there, mate. And uh, yeah, best of luck tomorrow. Likewise, my friend. Thank you. Brilliant, brilliant to catch up on with him. You know what? We don't do those sort of features that often, uh, but I think I think we should. It's always nice to converse in person and he's a person that you follow on youtube and different mm. social stuff don't you yeah I've, I've watched him for years mainly got to know him through fifa but as i've got more involved on twitter i've followed him and seen that he's he's very knowledgeable about burnley as you've seen there he, he knows his stuff and um yeah it was it was interesting to see what he had to say you know you know another person that's relatively knowledgeable <laughs> tom jordan tom jordan let's find out what he thinks and what team he's going to be putting out for tomorrow's game. Yeah, so expecting an interesting game at the weekend because of, because of both sides' form, really. Bournemouth really struggling, you know, really, really struggling. So we need to prioritise, obviously, staying in the Premier League. And for Burnley, absolutely flying in the Championship. So for Burnley, it's probably more about trying to keep momentum, but also resting some key players, potentially. For us, there's not really momentum because we haven't got any. So I do think there'll be changes, but equally, we've got a few out at the moment, which forces his hand a little bit. And it does feel like a game that we just need to tick off a win. It's not the league, but a win will be crucial for us. So in mind of that, I'm going to go with Mark Travers staying in goal. Uh, this is going to, I'm going to go for it as a 4-3-3. Three, three. Um, Travers is in goal, obviously, because Neto is still out. And I don't think we'll go for a, an inexperienced youth goalkeeper and Cameron Plain 
um, or even Will Dennis. So I think it will be Mark Travers in goal. Back four, I'm going to stick with Adam Smith at right back just because he is suspended for the next league game. So we don't really need to rest him. So I think he'll play at right back and probably have the armband as well. The two centre arse, I'm going to go for Jack Stevens to play alongside Lloyd Kelly just because I think Lloyd Kelly still needs their match minutes as he's only recently come back. And Jordan Zamora at left back coming back in there. The three in midfield, uh, the deepest player will be Ben Pearson. And then I think I'm going to go with Emiliano Marcondes and Joe Rothwell as the other two either side of Pearson. And then a front three, really, I'm going to go with Jamal Lowe off the right, Sariki Dembele off the left and Kiefer Moore through the middle. It's up in the air, really. I could be completely wrong or I could be bang on. I'm not sure. But um, intrigued by the game, I do think it's crucial that we get a win just to just to get some momentum of sorts going into the going into the next league game against Brentford and maybe a few players to to prove themselves and say look we're not on great form at the moment maybe we can come in and do a job for you so yeah little prediction I think we'll hopefully edge it but um that's what I'm going with see how close I am but hopefully a big win for Bournemouth yeah, so there you go. That's Tom Jordan with his team. And Ben, what do you think of that team? Do you like? Would you make any changes, or are you are you relatively happy with it? If if we were to field that, do you think do you think that could happen? I quite yeah. I I I could I could definitely see that team being put out. I I like the overall look at it, and I think with the midfield options, I don't think uh, O'Neill will play Lerma mainly for the fact that there's a bit up in the air about whether he's going to move in this January or not. But he looks a bit disinterested at the moment, yeah, to be I honest. Agree, yeah. Um, and Lewis Cook, we know that he's quite an injury-prone player, so and he, I, I think he's playing quite well at the moment. So I think resting him could be uh, good as well, mm-hmm. especially with Billing as well. He's just had something with his hip from yeah, a couple of games right. back, so I think it would be good if we rest him. Um, and Keith Moore up top as well. I, I think I, I think that's a good good shout from Tom there because we have been looking if the rumours are true about signing another striker, potentially Danny Ings. But, you know, who knows? Yeah. But um, the, if, if we can get Keith Moore's confidence back up, seeing as he, he hasn't been involved that much, to be honest, in the last few games, then that would be that would be nice to see. But if I were to see that team tomorrow at two o'clock, I would, I, I would be quite happy. Yeah, and we, we just need to get behind the boys. Like, I know it's a, a competition that we're not really fussed about, but in terms of what we take into that Brentford game, um, momentum is absolutely huge and you know people say that there's no easy match in football and there have been you know lots of people who who always say that over the years but the result that Brentford had against Liverpool just shows that I mean mm. they absolutely turned them over yeah it's, it's, it, we can we know that in football anything can happen and that Brentford are a very very good side mm. um, and I think especially this season the quality the overall quality in the Premier League doesn't really seem to be there mm. if I'm excluding Arsenal you know teams like Man City have been underperforming as such yeah. for their standards then we've got teams like Chelsea underperforming Liverpool etc and then on the flip side we've got teams like Brighton high flying Fulham high flying Brentford as well so um, it, it's, it's, it'll be very interesting to see what, what will come of the later weeks and especially a game against Brentford. Yeah, absolutely. So the referee for tomorrow is Tim Robinson. We had him four times last season at home against Luton, Stoke City, Middlesbrough. Also away at Fulham as well. So against Luton at home, eh, Stoke City, I think we beat them. Yeah. Middlesbrough, not so good. Away at Fulham. Eh. So mm, who knows what's going to happen. But look, it's nothing about the refs. We just need to see a decent performance. You're probably wondering, because it's the FA Cup, are you doing a free-for-all? There will be a free-for-all outside the 19-10 bar after the game. I suppose it's more of a wider discussion, really, because whatever happens in the game sort of leads us into how we're feeling about O'Neill and a few things on the pitch as we lead into the Brentford game. So join Tiggs and myself outside the 19-10 bar. Ben... It's been a pleasure to have you on, and absolutely ple- what a de- well. It's not really your debut, is it? But you, like yeah. you've been on before, but presenting debut. Yeah, I've I've, en- I've enjoyed it a lot, and hopefully you can enjoy watching us win and maybe get into the next round tomorrow. Yeah, and Tom Jordan, if you're watching, that's how to grow. Right, like, just <laughs> just just like vertically. That that's all you need to do. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video. Out the cherries. Out the cherries.